Hi, this is Vaughan at Westcote Bell Pottery in La Have, Nova Scotia, uh, www.westcotebellpottery.ca. Uh, we have a little earthenware kiln unloading. Most of it is Jackie's pieces, uh, but I have a few mugs in there as well. So uh, it's cone 04 glaze and then cone 01 for the bisque. Um, so it's a higher bisque than the actual glaze firing and that's how we get rid of all the crazing we have such a great earthenware clear glaze all right so uh, let's get going okay here we go these are on the redware clay and um some of them will have some yellow coming through, I think. Yes, is that right, Vaughn? Yep. This one is mostly just the white going down to the, the red in places. <clears throat> I'll take out mine and then I'll uh, let Vaughn take his out. This is um, the whale motif. Whoops, let me uh, get that in. There we go. A little of the yellow slip coming through in the sky there. It's another another whale mo motif. Let me do that again then. <clears throat> um, this one is has got a few touches of red like in the mouth of the cat and some color wafted over the um, it, with underglaze just kind of gently uh, sort of brushed over the the black just to add some variation What tools are you using to carve them? Um, also, I'm using that little, um, oh, it's like a V-shaped wire. So it's a closed loop, but it has more of a point to it. That's the one I mostly use. That's a Kemper tool. Yeah, and then there's the other one that is more like a, a longer loop. Um, and there's two variations. Um, the rest of these are yours. I'll let you take them out. Um, and I'll, I'll guess I'll pull this. This is the bottom of a jar, so there's going to be some lids. And this is um, underglaze painting with stencils. So this is um, white slip painted uh, on top of the red clay and then putting down various areas of underglazes, stenciling and then going back in and painting in details. So the lid to that one will be out later. And, uh, whoops, there's another one here. This is a little cat in a garden. Again, white slip underneath everything. Okay, one more to take over. Well, you've got one more in there. Do I? Oh, yes, I do. Another jar. This is another one with a cat in a garden. I'm talking to crows. This is also done with um, white slip underneath, stenciling and under glazes. Okay. So these basically are red clay thrown and then basically uh, spray the whole thing white two or three times and then spray it with a little yellow uh, but there's hardly any yellow in this one and then black over the top 
and then I uh, carve out the whole thing, but I repaint in the white on the sails. There's a little sharp thing just there. I have to sand that part out. Um, but basically it's uh, Scraffito carved. And that is the same for all of these. Um, and these are big mugs. These are probably 18, maybe even 20 ounce coffee mugs. So this is for the coffee addict. Large schooners. And I was carving these with the tools that um, Bill, Bill Wright sent me from artisanpotterytools.com. I've been playing around with the different sailboats, um, more sales of these pieces. The last time I did these, they sold for 125 Canadian dollars. Um, and these are pretty intense. This one's a smaller one, so this would be one of the $98 ones. And another small one. These are regular sized coffee mugs, basically. I would say these are about 12 ounce coffee mugs. Lots of yellow in that one. Okay, so I'm gonna keep unloading. I'm being careful not to let the um, stand drop it onto the floor of the kiln. This is the cap motif. This is a smaller size mug. Not quite espresso size, but it's kind of an in-between. Hand painted. I'm leaving a lot of the handles the red color of the clay so that you kind of have a little bit of a play between the handle and the base. I like the look of having some of the red clay showing. Here's more of an espresso size mug with the whale motif. And this one has a lot of, I went right down into the red in a lot of places. Birds. Oh, this is one of Vaughn's. More of an espresso size he's got here. One nice thing that Vaughn's been doing with his is he's been adding extra layers of the white underglaze to the sail areas and it gives them a real feeling of coming out and billowing in the wind so that they really stand up. Same with the lighthouse. It really stands up because there's extra layers of white underglaze in there, in that shape. It's another small mug with the gulls on it. This mug was a refire because we found the first time we fired it that some of the areas had come up, uh, the glaze was kind of dry, so we decided to refire it, and I see that it um, turned out pretty good. Sometimes refiring, uh, you lose a lot of detail. Um, this is another uh, jar, so I'll have the lids to show you later. I think the lids must all be on the bottom shelf. This is cat in a landscape. Fish motif. Haven't done fish in quite a while. It's kind of fun. Can be really free with the shapes. I like playing with the kind of water, water movement. 
you know, different ways of showing water movement. This is another more espresso sized mug. there. It's another jar, flying birds. And here's another jar with the flying birds motif. done here. Birds. And this is another one that we refired because the blue glaze had um, soaked up a lot of the glaze. The details a bit softer on this one I can see on the refire. And this is another fish motif, but on this one you can see in places, before I carved, I put on very thin washes of red and some, there was blue and green, but I see that it's the red that's mostly showed up. Um, and then carve so that the fish, the blacks in the fish, it's very hard to see because it's subtle, but it gives a real nice variety to the blacks. You know, there's some, some reddish black, some greenish blacks, and some bluish black um, in the areas that, of the fish. So I like that. I think, um, you know, especially this, this one shows up pretty good, but this one has a lot of subtlety in here. So I think that is something I will do again. Okay, I'm just showing you this one again. I'm gonna see if I can get it so that you can see the subtlety in the blacks and some of the red underglaze. So this is just thin, um, like a wash or just a thin translucent layer of underglaze, a blue, a green, and a red over the black before I carved it and it gives a lot of richness to the black areas because they're not just black black, they're warm blacks and cool blacks and sometimes even flashes of red. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the next piece. Got a bowl here. Yay, got that. And uh, I'll just show this bowl here. It's mostly in blues. And I think Vaughn did some chattering on the outside. There we go. And then these are the lids to the jars. This is the blue again. Um, this glaze has come a bit dry. Um, it seems like our blues are often doing that. I will pull these lids out and then we can look at them on the, on the jars. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a good red. the jars Whoa. with their lids. Mm -hmm. I'll just turn them around so you can see. The lids are all um, like little sky motifs on top of the lid. This is the 
flying birds. This is the cat in the garden watching birds. This lid, the glaze is somewhat dry. We might refire it. Here's another one of the birds flying over the landscape and there's sort of a river at the bottom. Blue. I did this one so that the sky and the river were kind of a similar color blue. And this is another one with the cat going through the landscape. Last but not least, this one was a little bit larger, more of a canister, short canister shape with the birds. Kind of meant to look like a birdhouse or a, a little, little cottage or something with a roof motif with a nest on top. Sort of a garden house or a bird house. And there we are. That's the firing.